Okay, this is Mario again, and this is the layout uh, schematic and sort of a black diagram of the connections to my E300 scooter after doing the modification uh, so that I could use two 18 volt uh, Ryobi tool batteries. You can see them right there. There's the plate right here that I modified, and I will show this on the actual E300 scooter, but it's worth uh, going over this uh, diagram just to be clear on how this is um, all connected. So I have my two batteries there. I have the adapters. These are power wheel adapters that I got from Amazon. Uh, very nice uh, adapters. They come with uh, their own fuse and switch. And so I just left the fuses intact as part of the, uh, the adapters. And I connected these in series with the output um, of the controller here so this is actually there's a there's a connector here um, uh, this was modified obviously to take the um, uh, these uh, adapters the power wheel adapters and they sit at the bottom of the uh, box that's underneath the that plastic uh, container or box that's underneath the um, scooter and they sit flush right on right on top of the the bottom of that box but they do protrude out of the base plate and they protrude protrude just enough you know to allow these batteries to clip on the sides of these uh, adapters so i can just grab them with my two fingers there clip it clip it on and push in on the clips to take them out uh, very similar to the way you installed these on the on the tools um, very nice adapters. I did uh, make, um, um, prior to these uh, coming into existence, I had already designed uh, some 3D printed adapters of my own for the uh, Ryobi batteries because I wanted to use these not only for uh, scooters but for other things that you can, um, you know, just uh, power with 18 volts or 36 volts if you run these two in series as I'm doing here. So. The way this uh, block diagram uh, uh, schematic uh, is uh, set up here, um, I could have done a little bit better uh, uh, set up here, but uh, I'm having my breakfast, and this this is what I do typically in the mornings. Is I, I tend to sketch a lot. This is my, my sketchbook, and I go you know every every year I get a book. Uh, I either go through one book or a few books in a year, depending on, uh, you know, where my, my mind is at. And I have so many of these books with all these sketches that I do in the morning as I'm having breakfast, which gives me, uh, it's a good time to, uh, you know, just um, put all my, my ideas before I start any day. So I decided today to uh, do this diagram so that it, it is... Um, it is shown in this video along with the other um, section, which will be on the uh, scooter itself. But let me go over this uh, uh, setup right here. This is the speed control that I'm using. This is a 1,000 watt, 36 to 48 volt speed control, and this is for regular brushed motors, not brushless. Um, uh, I also got this from Amazon. These are fairly inexpensive, these uh, speed controls. And the way these uh, come with all these connectors is uh, you, you almost have to make your own uh, connectors here because um, no uh, particular speed control follows a particular standard as far as the connectors and so they, they come with various connectors and they may not match you know some of these um, um, uh, external uh, the devices here like the throttle the on off uh, keys uh, switch that comes with uh, some of these throttles uh, the brake um, switches there are part of the brakes, uh, brake lights, uh, motor connection, and uh, the power input here, which is uh, what you're seeing here. So what I ended up doing is just buying a bunch of connectors, just regular um, um, uh, Molex uh, connectors so that I can make my own females and, and males. And I just got it all, all the other, uh, the rest of the connectors that I couldn't use. So what we're looking here is the obviously you're, you're going to need uh, the on off switch this uh these speed controllers come with all these um uh, all these connections here 
you have a connector here for the on-off switch. Which if you buy a throttle with the on-off switch, that's how you connect that. The throttle comes with um, three wires. Typically, they're green, red, and black. And those go to the potentiometer that's part of the throttle, you know, to um, uh, variate um, or, or, or to um, adjust uh, the speed of the, the motor. And so this is uh, all linked into the electronics here. So there are three wires that come from the throttle that's connected there. And like I said, all these are via connectors here. Let me just put down the connectors here. Make the uh, diagram for the connectors. So that's connector, that's a connector. This is also a connector here. And so are all these other things that you see here. They all have connectors here. Uh, the speed control comes with um, connectors for the brake, for two brakes, this particular one that I bought. So I'm only using one brake on the E300 scooter, so I'm only using one, the other one is just floating. And same thing with this, uh, it comes with two brake lights. Um, I have not uh, measured the output voltage of these uh, connectors here, so I don't know if they power 12 volts or 5 volts. Because uh, some uh, lights are 12 volts and some lights are 5 volts. Be careful if you're going to wire LED lights because LED lights operate under um, low, lower voltages. Um, if you feed too much of a higher voltage than the LED can take, the, some do operate at 12 volts. You know, cluster of LEDs, you can uh, um, set them up in series, you know, to operate at, uh, say, 12 volts if this was a 12 volt uh, output here. But I haven't measured that, so I don't know uh, that voltage that's coming out. Maybe in a, in a future video, I will put that um, information there. But know that you know there are two connectors here for brake light one and brake light two. Um, this is uh, obviously the uh, the thicker wires right here, and this is this goes to the motor, uh, 36 volt DC motor on the E300 scooters. They come with 24 volt uh, DC motors. So my plan was to remove that and put a 36 volt motor so that um, um, so that I don't stress the existing 24 volt DC motor that's currently on the um, E300. My other option was to go with a brushless uh, motor, just a, a direct direct drive, and that's why I have um, I have not changed the existing motor to a 36 volt motor. But this is what you would want to wire it to. So that's why I have this uh, label as a 36 volt DC motor. Your uh, power wheel adapters are connected in series, as you see them here, plus to minus, minus to plus, and minus. So you have coming in from um, com coming out of the speed control, you have a plus wire here. So this is your plus or red sometimes. And this is your minus, your black wire, and these are thick wires that go to the uh, power, um, uh, that take the power input. So this is where you feed your battery um, connections to. And because these come with uh, 30 amp uh, fuses uh, themselves individually, I decided to bypass all the um, connections on the side of that box that's typically um, where the... Uh, uh, circuit circuit uh, breaker and the charging port and the on off switch is located so I'm bypassing all the switches on the box itself that sits underneath the, the scooter because I am using a key, a key on off switch so I don't need to switch at the bottom I am using um, independent fuses that are part of these so I don't need the um, um, circuit uh, breaker on the box and because these batteries I charge these with their own uh, charger that comes with these batteries. I'm not using the charger that comes, you know, as part of this box underneath the uh, scooter. So I bypass all that. Um, but basically, this is the black um, schematic or black diagram schematic to the uh, connections as I have it set up on my E300 scooter. And now let me go back and. Uh, show you the, the scooter itself. Uh, so that's my wife's that I need to do the same thing that I'm doing it to this one here. So this is my scooter. And as you can see here are the uh, power wheel adapters. Uh, here's a modified plate. 
these are like I said connected in series you know I just pop in the batteries there they clip onto these uh, uh, clips right here this is sitting there it's not going anywhere I made sure that, that when I cut out these uh, sections here um, uh, they, they, they were uh, nice and um, um, nice and snug and, and uh, as, as pre precise as I could get them you know I cut this with a Dremel uh, tool uh, just went with one of those abrasive uh, wheels I think I went through um, four of those abrasive wheels because uh, they do wear out or and sometimes they, they break because they're, they're a little brittle uh, there are so many other ways that you can cut them I could have put this on my CNC machine and uh, designed the um, design the uh, geometry on CAD and, 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 and then um, take that into the CNC machine, you know, to create a file to do the, the cutting. Um, I could have done that, you know, but I just thought, you know, for this project right here, just uh, the Dremel tool with the cutoff wheels was, uh, was, in, was fine and it didn't take me that long to do this. Uh, you just got to be careful, you know, when you cut these, these things that, uh, uh, that you do it in, in sections, boom, 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 you, you know, there, there's no, uh, it's, it's a lot harder, you know, to trace this with a, with a wheel around this way. So I just did it in, in, in little sections, you know, it, it's lines. So I cut that as a line right there. I cut this as a, as a series of lines right here. And then, um, the rest of this, I just, um, use the edge of the, the cut of wheel. Uh, I also used a, a um, a um, uh, what would you call that a file um, a ro rotary file you know that you can buy these uh, it looks like a drill bit but it's actually a file that you can grind things and that's how I cleaned up some of these edges here and then I use a, a just a regular manual file a flat file you know to do that the flat sections uh, once uh, I got the, that uh, set up um, I did the uh, the seat yeah, as you you'll notice the seat right here. It's a little dust because I've been working on this was uh, sitting in my in my shed. I painted this by the way, and uh, I I moved the seat. That's the other modification that I talk about in uh, my earlier video. I moved the seat back uh, that distance because typically this this uh, bolt right here, or this this hole right here, this um, slot sits right there. And this one right here sits right there so i shifted from this point to that to that location right there so it gave me that much distance between the um, the front of this to the steering column because this is my you know this is my personal uh scooter here however um when i did this i also had to turn the seat um uh, backwards in other words this is the front of the seat actually so i turned it backwards and the way that is attached, as we can see it through here, is just attached at the at the bottom here at, at that point. I have to make provisions to attach the rear section here somehow. You just put a bolt right through, and, and, and it'll prevent it from going up like like that. Typically, that that's that's where the hole is. But if I mount it like that, you can see how the seat is, uh, you know, just crazy on on that angle. So I, I'm just resting it right there, and I'm using this as my my single uh, uh, bolt uh, for now. Uh, these lights I got from um, also from Amazon. It's a, it's a kit that came with these uh, came with these um, uh, this cell phone uh, uh, um, uh, strap uh, or uh, re a retainer, and it's got uh, lights at the front. It's a very nice light, very bright. It's got a few modes of operation there. Um, so that's a. Uh, it's a nice little detail that I wanted to add. So when we go to the park, we can put our cell phone here. The, um, the other thing I did is I added this uh, throttle here and you can buy these very inexpensive. They're about $15 and they come with a switch. Here's my on off switch. Turns it on and off. You can have a, a three digit uh, readout here for the voltage of the battery, which is very convenient to, to have it in front of you to see what voltage the battery is at. I don't like the ones with the little slots, you know, those little dots, uh, LED uh, just bars there because it doesn't give you the true reading in, uh, in as a value. It just gives you, you know, the bar. Uh, I, I like to have the value so I can see exactly, you know, what what level the, the battery is at. So when it's beyond a certain level, I stop, the, the, uh, I stop running it so I don't over-discharge the batteries. And, um, 
that's a good uh, you know indicator. And here's of course the throttle. This is a three wire connector, and this is a two wire connector here for the switch. This is just an on off switch. Three wires here because it has a potentiometer. Potentiometers have three three leads there. Uh, the brake also one single brake. Right in this particular case, this one has the switch right here. Uh, this is the brake, the actual brake cable. You know the um, that steel cable that pulls the the, the brake, um, either on the uh, drum brake or on the disc. You know this is the the one that, that does the stopping, and this is the the brake uh, for the brake light. So all these three things that you see here, these wires, are run through this um, perforation here. This is a half inch uh, hole. I mentioned in my earlier video that I could have done this as a 5 eighths, just to give me a little more room there to uh, feed the cables through, but that's uh, one of them. So if you're gonna do something like that, I would recommend using 5 eighths using the step uh, drill bits that I showed in my other video. Um, this is uh, about six inches from the top to that front there, which allows a nice curvature here, a wide curvature. You don't want it too close because then it gets too, um, a little too tight of a curvature for this uh, cable here, in particular, the uh, the brake cable. These wire cables, they, they could, you know, you, you can put them right there if you wanted to, you know, just feed the, uh, the cables through there, but this needs a little more wider uh, turn here, so a wider diameter or radius rather. So that's why I did that at six inches from the top here. The uh, then I have another perforation three inches from the bottom here, and likewise, you know, that should be five eighths instead of half inch because uh, this was a little tight here. Likewise, here on this bar right here, that's also half inch, that should be five eighths. And of course, at the bottom, where the cables come out, you um, it's going to be a little bit dark here because um, I am in my porch and it's uh, early in the morning, but I have shades all over my windows here. So it's com coming out at the bottom and then it feeds right into the existing uh, opening for this uh, battery box compartment here. So that's how I'm feeding all those cables through this uh, so this E300S scooter, and this is a, um, uh, the S I believe stands for the uh, the ones that come with the seat. And you can see how the seat, let me get back to the seat here, how this stands. Um, it's, it's a little bit further uh, because I, I turned it uh, 180 degrees and I also moved this back. So I'm actually sitting directly in line with this wheel almost. So the, the, the center of the seat is is about right there. So uh, it is a, it is a little bit uh, too far back. Um, so when I ride this, I gotta make sure that I lean my body a little bit forward. So to create, uh, uh, so to move the, the, the center of uh, mass, you know, more in line with uh, the center of the, the scooter. And so I don't pop a wheel, <laughs> you know, when I sit, sit here and if I give it throttle, It'll want to, uh, it'll want to pop the front uh, wheel up. So, my work around that in my next uh, iteration of this uh, scooter, I have uh, a few of these scooters uh, that I bought inexpensively to uh, just to play around with and cut and chop here, chop there, and then kind of modify them, uh, you know, to my liking. So my next one, I um, I am going to cut the frame right here and I'm going to add an extension of about five, uh, four to six inches, uh, just um, uh, another bar there. I also bought a welder so that I can do the, the welding. It's something that I'm getting into uh, while doing these uh, modifications. I've, n I've never welded, never had the, um, the need to weld. But, you know, when you do stuff like this, you, you, you know, it's, it's imperative that, uh, that you use a welder. It's just no. You you could do it with nuts and bolts and um, and some brackets, but it's uh you know it just makes more sense just to just to weld the uh, the the pieces, especially when you're piecing things or you you're modifying extending the frame. So I'm gonna be extending a, a very similar E300 frame, uh, four to six inches, just to bring this wheel further back. So it allows me to do the same thing with the seat here. What you see there. And I can be, um, 
and that'll prevent uh, the scooter uh, from uh, popping a wheel when I give it a throttle, and, I, and it'll pre it'll allow me to sit more more vertical instead of leaning forward, you know, just to keep my weight uh, for, uh, towards the front. Uh, 36 volts running on the uh, on the existing uh, DC motor here. It's underneath. It's part of these uh, scooters. That's a 24 volt motor. It is stressing this motor, but since my uh, goal was to um, remove this and put a, a put a, uh, a direct drive here with a uh, brushless motor directly on the on the wheel itself, and change the speed controller to a uh, 36 volt uh, uh, brushless uh, type of controller. I'm not too worried about burning this at, at some point of these uh, these motors. Plus, I, I have so many other scooters that, that use a 24 volt motor, so I, I could. I could swap it, uh, you know, not a big problem. So I have plenty of spare parts and, um, you know, for these scooters. I have a, a bunch of these scooters that I've been buying throughout the years to do modifications. Here's another, uh, e, I think this is an E200 that I also bought it. Uh, it's almost fairly new. And I've been buying these uh, fairly inexpensive, you know, from uh, offer up and buying them uh, on Goodwill. So I've been buying a lot of these things just to uh, play around, have a, a lot of parts 